There's only one way to cook Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken, and that's my way. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. Jen. You're not Jen. I guess it's just me. Thank you for joining me for another Whitfield Food Review. Actually, Jen's at work. She told me to go after this one myself, and she's going to be home for the beer and the tasting. The best part, quite frankly. We were supposed to do it last weekend, but unfortunately, I hurt my back pretty bad. That's why I'm wearing, you can't see it, but that's why I'm wearing my little back brace. More importantly, this is why we're here. As of the time of this release, it is not out nationwide. It is only in a select few places. And a friend of mine has tried it. John from Bite and Chew allowed me to pick his brain over exactly what this sauce tasted like. Texture. Taste. He had a great idea. He gave me their phone number. Hi, yes. Um, I, I, I know that you guys are one of the only locations that have the new, um, the Cheetos chicken sandwich. Yeah, yeah. I have, I have some allergy issues and I don't see it on your website. Do you know what the, the base of the sauce is? Yeah. Right. No, I, no, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. All right. All right. Soybean oil. I spent the better part of three days trying to figure out this sauce. I tried using vegetable oil and it became really oily and the flavor of the soybean oil was just overpowering. It was not tasting. There's no way that was right. Then it dawned on me. Margarine is that hydrogen in it. Soybean oil. This is the Whitfield's Food Review Cupcake Recipe of Cheetos Chicken Sandwich. Mm, boom. Nope. Somebody, no, no, bro fist has been taken. Oh, oh, oh. Marinate that chicken. I did mine overnight. But let me have a little conversation with you something about something, something. Let me have a little conversation with you about something. KFC recipe you find online would say, soak it in buttermilk, then use a buttermilk egg wash. Every single one of those for extra crispy is wrong. Go to KFC's site. They have the nutritional info there. More importantly, the allergen. So you check milk and eggs. Guess what comes up as safe for you to eat? Using my noodle. And then I found one recipe online. Selves worked there and also knew other people who worked there and knew for a fact what they did was water. A little bit of sugar, citric acid, a little bit of MSG, a little bit of salt. Overnight, that my friends is your marinade. Now is your marinade, it's your egg wash. Minus the egg. So of course, the most important thing on a KFC recipe is the 11 herbs and spices. Now that's for the original. I'm not 100% sure if the original recipe has the same spices and herbs and also there's a little tricky thing here too there's 11 herbs and spices they you know they try to figure all this stuff out and they omit sugar because sugar's neither a spice or an herb so it's not part of the 11. the fact of the matter is when you go to their website it clearly says sugar and it's not part of the 11. same with msg in which we have the 11 different spices and herbs for flavor all the buzz out there was this someone apparently found the original recipe. I don't know if it's true or not, but people have recreated it and agreed, this is it. I'm gonna take the word for it. They're better at it than I am. So why don't you go to them? No, don't go, stay here. I'm, I'm better. These are ingredients. Let's go over them right now. Two thirds teaspoon salt. Since two thirds is a goofy ass measurement, let's mostly fill up two thirds salt. Half a teaspoon of, oh me. Half a teaspoon of time. Half a teaspoon basil, one third teaspoon oregano. And for whatever reason, we had to go to five friggin' places to find someone who actually carried celery salt. One teaspoon of that, so it's actually pretty important. One teaspoon black pepper. That's a lot of pepper. One teaspoon ground mustard. Four teaspoons paprika. Damn, Colonel will like himself some paprika. There you go. Two teaspoons garlic salt that one said it was low sodium and then three teaspoons of white pepper i like white pepper i trust the colonel there you have it 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. These go to eleven. And we're gonna do one fourth teaspoon sugar. There you have it. These measurements are for two cups of flour, but also a little birdie told me that they put a little bit of cornmeal in it, and I trust this birdie. This birdie seems to know what we're talking about, and then they fried the birdie, so it's kind of sad actually. But hold on. My dehydrator fell on me when I went and got this. Right here. Apparently adds to the crunchiness because come hell or high water, the Colonel and KFC instilled this upon the people making their chicken. It must be crispy. I have not made this yet. I have not experimented with it. So I'm kind of going for the ride with you. I'm kind of hoping it's right. Important, use one massively stained bowl. Why is that stained? Well, I used turmeric once. Apparently turmeric and white do not go together well. I can't get that off. My life depended on it. I gotta get new bowls. Two. Just a little bit of that cornmeal. Add your spices in. And there you have it, folks. That is your KFC copycat secret. No one knows about it except the millions of people who read about it online. Other than them, it's just you and I. As I alluded to in the intro, the hardest part was going to be recreating this sauce from scratch, having never tasted it. Soybean oil, that's what it is. And I tried it, I was like, liars? It's not soybean oil at all. After so many failed batches and three bags of Cheetos, I sacrificed a lot of good Cheetos for this. What you're gonna wanna do is take a full cup. I'm using my magic bullet. I will say, it's kind of a pain in the butt with this because you have to keep shaking it because it doesn't really just keep circulating. You can also just put it in a Ziploc bag and crush it up. That works too. Cheeto dust. You're going to get some of these big pieces in there, but that's fine. You can always siphon them out. It's getting a little warm in here because I had to heat up my oil beforehand and make this butter and it's already 80 degrees here in Florida in February. Start off. Go ahead and put a quarter cup of your Cheeto dust in there. The exact description John gave me was, it was definitely runny. It was not a thick sauce. It was not like a cheese sauce, but it had a very strong Cheetos flavor. It's almost like the liquid seeped into the chicken itself and the bread, but left behind a Cheetos residue. Leave this while you're frying your chicken on low because it will kind of coagulate. Set it and forget it. Actually, don't forget it. You're gonna need that. Now, time to bread it. Buttermilk, you gotta use buttermilk and eggs. Kind of sound, I kind of sound like butter myself there for South Park. It's not buttermilk and it's not an egg wash, it's water. To get that texture, flick some water in there. Now this water is the brine I used. It creates those little clumpy parts and I almost forgot cornstarch. That cornstarch will ensure extra crispiness. And again, crispiness rules with the extra crispy recipe. Hence the name. So your chicken should be very nice and marinated. Dip it in that water a little bit. Throw it in there. I know you're supposed to have your wet and dry, but I, I just made both of them wet, so this is how I like to do it. Now something I found really interesting about this, from flour to fry, there is no resting time. So this needs to go in there immediately. This is going to be one area that is definitely different than KFC's. I mean, some a lot of this might end up being different. This one I know for a fact is different. We do not have a industrial grade pressure fryer. Have a pressure cooker at home and deep frying it. You're not supposed to because apparently it can explode on you. And if you've ever gotten splattered by a little bit of that hot oil, you'll know damn well it's not going to be a good day if the entire thing explodes. I'm not taking that chance. We're going to go ahead and use our just regular deep fryer with vegetable oil. Any frying and especially one that's so specific to create this crispiness and iconic flavor. Temperatures and the time are a huge part of it. When I bought this fryer, I did not know <laughs> there was no way to control the temperature. They're like, you fry at this temperature always. Granted, I will admit, the times I fried with it, it comes out amazingly well, but I would have liked to have been able to control that. Otherwise, you gotta fry that again, I guess you just throw it in there. That's how it works. Let it float for a second. Aerate, so it's nice and fluffy. Floats, doesn't stick immediately to your basket. Now drop it. And I don't know how long, because the fryer temperature's different. I'll let you know in a second. Look who's here. You scared me. After all the hard work was already done, it's like, what's for dinner? Give me a beer. We had fancy beers the last few days, but this ended up taking me a lot longer than I thought. So now we got Corona. That famous craft brew, Corona. <laughs> yeah, when you're having a 7,000 calorie chicken sandwich, 
What do you reach for? Corona Light. For your health. He doesn't like lime in his. I like the lime. You know that's like the dirtiest thing in a restaurant? From the grocery store too. Right. <laughs> Everyone just... touched that and you just, and you didn't wash the outside of that. Nope. You stuck it right in your beer. Don't worry kids, that alcohol will wash all them germs away. It doesn't go straight from the fryer to your mouth, obviously it'd be too hot. But it's not even a matter of it cooling off. What they do is they stick it in a oven at 170 for 20 minutes. Not only to keep it warm, but they call it to make sure it's thoroughly cooked and seal in those juices. So that's what we're gonna do. And there you have it, folks. That is how you make yourself a genuine bona fide copycat recipe. Whitfield's Food Review copycat recipe. Thanks, in part to John from Bite and Chew. This bites for chew. Womp, 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 womp. Well, it all kind of came together. I was frustrated, had moments of doubt and crying in the corner. Well, that's just your life, though. But it was directed at food this time, oh. not just everyday sorrow. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. Bottoms up, friends. Wow. It's so tender. This tastes exactly like he described it. That sauce is really good. I didn't think it was going to have that much of a flavor, and it actually does. Fit the criteria that John gave us. Saturates the bread and leaves a Cheeto residue. But yet the Cheeto flavor is very potent. A little salty. It tastes like a salty Cheeto. It's because yeah. it's, it's, the, it's the remnants of it. Guys, I think we nailed it. And that, that chicken, that you know secret recipe, ain't secret no more. Oh, it tastes just like it. It really does. Look how thick, we made it extra big. It's tender. The bite through was like nothing. This is honestly probably one of the best chicken sandwiches I've ever had in my life. Look at that. Yeah, real good. He's right. Somehow, that Cheeto sauce works. A little, a little hot in here. Makeup. Oh wait, that's right. She never existed. <laughs> oh my God. Look at this thing. I mean, if it tastes anything like that, then it's pretty awesome. Unbelievable. So ladies and jelly spoons, that I think is a five out of five any day, all day, every day. And Jen would also. I that shit all day. Oh my God. Please try this. Maybe ours would be a little better. I don't know, maybe We'll not. try it if it comes out here, out this way and see. I don't know, KFC's pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, they are pretty good. Colonel's like, I don't like what you're insinuating, son. Your chicken might be tasty, but it ain't Colonel tasty. <laughs> Like a cartoon <laughs> anyway, so if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button down there and the bell because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. Now they're for funsies. And if you don't hit that bell, you'll never know when we have a video. They'll make a lot of suggestions. None of them will be us. So either way, guys, click that like button and it will help me recover faster from my back injury and my sweating issue. Now I'm going to finish my Corona. She's going to eat the rest of hers and I'm going to stare like a puppy dog who wishes I had some more food left. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and all that other stuff. And until next time. Gotta eat, right? No? Mm-hmm. Okay.